So yeah, that's it's interesting to talk about cholesterol in in context with personal, you know, personal diagnostics and and you know health information about your own physiology, um, because the omega three index is a better predictor of health and a better predictor of mortality risk than cholesterol. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Holistic Navigator podcast, where we believe in the body's capacity for self-healing if it's given the proper nutrients and care it deserves. My name is Brian Strickland. I'm the producer of the show. And as always, I'm joined in the studio today by our host, Mr. Ed Jones. Today, we're talking all about omega-3, specifically how to test omega-3s at home. Omega-3 fatty acids are a part of our core four program, and we believe that they are absolutely essential in anyone's supplement regimen. But what you may not know is exactly what your blood levels are. Well, that's what we're talking about today with Sam Wiley, the founder of Wiley's Finest Omega-3s. Sam helps us understand why Omega-3s are just so vital to our health and the ins and outs of this at-home test that you can do on your own. We have a lot to cover in this episode, so I'm going to go ahead and hop off. So here is your host, Mr. Ed Jones. And thank you so much, Brian. And today we have a super informative uh, podcast on the Holistic Navigator. You know, anyone who listens to any of my previous almost 100 podcasts knows that I'm very, very much uh, invested in information, our own personal information, like blood testing, and, and in fact, one of my podcasts, the most pop, one of the more popular, was with Dr. Lavalley on how to interpret blood work, and it's extremely important for people to know their own numbers because don't expect your traditional healthcare provider to be very knowledgeable about this. It simply isn't happening. They're there for a different role, which I think they're an important role. But if you want to know your nutritional status, the things that you can do to probably live longer and live healthier, it will have to be probably from another type of practitioner or you gather information yourself and, and kind of become the guiding force. Well, one of the most important tests that I keep seeing popping up across the land of functional holistic nutrition medicine is the omega-3 test. And some time ago, one of the um, companies had reached out uh, with their rep and was uh, allowing us to access a at-home omega-3 test to determine what's called an index. Well, today I have on the Holistic Navigator, Sam Wiley from, uh, he's a founder of, of Wiley's Finest Omega-3 Company and has a really good history, family-owned business since 1981. He's been involved since 2012. And welcome, uh, Sam, to The Holistic Navigator. Thank you for having me on. It's an honor. Well, I know that just some of the communication I've had th through the rep or through the company with you, you are very, very, in, I think, invested in the value of knowing our omega-3 levels. And in fact, just before the show, I mean, I brought up uh, a few things that really are powerful statements that are saying that one of the um, most informative pieces of numbers that we could have for future health and reduction of mortality is the omega-3 index. And looking at it, comparing it to cholesterol, cholesterol is, I won't say it's a joke, but it is so much further down the list of important numbers to me and to those functional medicine people who I trust that omega-3 just uh, shines completely. And we need to really have this as a part of our I don't say every year, but every regular period of time, I think every person should be accessing the omega-3 index. And the fact we can now do it at home, and you and you can explain how all that works. But let's talk about that. I mean, tell me why and how did you get so interested in the omega-3 and, and work so hard to allow uh, people to have it at their own home? So, yeah, that's it's interesting to talk about cholesterol in, in context with personal you know, personal diagnostics and, and, you know, health information about your own physiology. Um, because the omega-3 index 
is a better predictor of health and a better predictor of mortality risk than cholesterol. Um, most Americans are, you know, familiar with their cholesterol numbers or especially middle-aged men who have, you know, met with a, a, a general practitioner maybe and, and, you know, had their blood work done and he says, Oh, it looks like your cholesterol is a little high. Um, you know, it's one of the world's largest drugs is the category of statins. But we see that actually the, your cholesterol levels are a much weaker predictor of your mortality risk than the amount of omega-3 levels in your red blood cells. And the amount of omega-3 levels in your red blood cells, it's the amount of omega-3 fats that make up the cell walls of your, of your blood. And so um, there's a man named William Harris, Bill Harris. He's a 40-year uh, researcher in omega-3 fatty acids. He is one of the most published authors in the world in peer-reviewed medical literature. And he's been obsessed with measuring omega-3 levels in blood in humans for a long time. And he and a man named, a German researcher named Clemens von Schacke invented this omega-3 index, which is a way to, um, it's a way to express how much omega-3s are in your red blood cells versus the other fatty acids that make up your red blood cells. And so you don't wanna have too much omega-3s in your red blood cells, but you don't wanna have too few. And so what, what the research shows is, is that there is a direct correlation between heart disease risk and omega-3 index. And so the, the average or typical American omega-3 level is around four to four and a half percent. It's gone up slightly over the last 20 years uh, in the data, but it's still fairly low. And um, that data set that they have of hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people who have had their omega-3 levels measured shows um, in countless peer-reviewed studies that an omega-3 index of eight to 10% is a, is a uh, puts you in a much lower risk category. So it's, it's a very, it's a, it's a good predictor of overall heart disease risk. Oh, well, that's a great explanation. And in fact, we, I want to talk a little bit about my own test because I did it about three months ago and I do consume a good uh, variety of nutrients, as you probably would assume. And uh, actually, you know, I do kind of write every six months to a year, I write, what are the 72 supplements I take every day? And I'm, when I say this, I don't expect anyone to take that many. One, I'm a guinea pig, self-appointed. I think to be put together a supplement program that would apply to almost 90 plus percent of our population, I came up with something called the Core 4. Uh, it is what I've seen after almost 43 years of seeing connections between supplements and health. And it, I really distilled it down to basically five products, even though we call it the core four. I mean, it's the right multivitamin, correct green drink that does multiple functions, uh, omega-3, magnesium, and vitamin D. And if you if you go to the Holistic Navigator and type in core four, you can listen to the whys of this, the hows of this. And uh, nutritionw.com sponsors the Holistic Navigator. And on there, there's actually auto ships for this. So um, omega-3 is one of the key components. And I know with, you know, most people do know this, but the omega threes research is very clear about it, lowering triglyceride levels, increasing HDLs, blood pressure optimization, uh, decreasing risk of abnormal heart rhythms. Even though there's a recent study, we're not going to talk much about that because this 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 podcast will last a long time. Uh, there's always headlines that pop up every few years about, oh, this supplement could be causing difficulties. This was about some AFib, in, and we looked deeply into that study. And one is they're using the synthetic version of omega-3s, which I am hugely not a fan of. That was the, the big red flag for me. It also decreases platelet aggregation or basically thick blood uh, and reduces inflammatory markers. 
so I, I love the fact that those two gentlemen uh, teamed up to create something of of actually life saving value, and it's a very reasonable price. And then the information when I did mine, uh, uh, Sam, I was blown away that I just thought I'd get one sheet back that said, "Okay, your omega three level is this." No, it took t- uh, tested my omega six level. Uh, the ratios between inflammation omegas, which is omega six, to the others, the trans fat levels. If we all remember trans fats, uh, it was basically kind of outlawed years ago because it was like an absolute toxin poison for heart disease, brain chemistry, and everything else. And and then I have this great explanation on this test about uh, from foods to the explanation of what each of these components mean. I mean, I was blown away for, I think this test is about 50 or 60 bucks. I've never seen anything like it. So uh, kudos to you and the fact that you have put this together. So if a person wants to um, do this, just tell them real quick the procedures of how they would do this in their own home and what happens. So the Omega-3 Index Test Kit is um, a at-home blood dried blood spot kit. So you have a small um, you have a small package that really has not very many things in it: a lancet, uh, you know, a wipe, a band aid, a collection card. Um, you know, Lancet makes a, a, a very small little pinprick in your finger, very similar to, say, what you might use for a blood glucose monitor. Um, and a um, few drops of blood on a card, fill out some information online, mail it away with the postage paid envelope. And uh, in one to two weeks, you'll get your results via email. And it's private and confidential. Uh, and it will show you what your omega-3 level is, and depending on the um, and depending on the complexity of the test, whether you purchase the basic test or the complete profile. It sounds like you purchased the complete profile. Um, you can get more or less information about not just your omega-3 levels, but also sort of your whole uh, fatty acid profile of your blood cells. Yes, and. Um you know, nobody likes sticking their finger, but it was pretty darn easy. You made, the kit was well put together. And let me ask you uh, my own personal question, since I have an expert on board here like yourself. You did mention that, of course, all things in nature, it has a a optimal level to be at. And sometimes we think more is always better. Okay, mine came back at a level of 11 percent. Is that too much? I know we want to shoot for an eight percent. I think index. Is that correct? I, most most research uh, would suggest that in that eight to ten percent range is where you see um, the maximum benefit, and that after ten percent, um, it's not. You may not receive any additional marginal benefit, right? So it may be. Um, there's there's great debate around what is what is a healthy normal level. The normal range um, for a healthy adult seems to be somewhere between eight percent to maybe as high as sixteen percent omega threes. Um, someone who eats seafood on a daily basis, say three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, um, routinely can have an omega three index of fourteen or fifteen, sixteen percent. So it's not uncommon or unusual among someone who prioritizes omega-3 consumption to have something in that 11, 12 percent, that's pretty good, right? So, um, you know, we for, for data that we've seen, you know, my, my mother's had a lot of joint pain uh, in her life. And so for, for data sets that we've seen, like, I think she measured like a, a 16 percent omega-3 index, very, very high, unusual, right? But but she, she prioritizes things like anti-inflammatory, like, you know, curcumin and omega-3s and, and things that are beneficial for joint health. Um, but again, more maybe more important to her than, say, your, uh, your, your average or typical person. So I, a lot of, um, I think the highest levels that have been seen have been into the, into the 20s. And those are like uh, Greenman, you know, Inuits um, who are, uh, you know, consuming, you know, seal fat on a regular basis. So, you know, 11%, I would say, good job. 
Oh, good. Um, Thank you. I, uh, we do a lot of, uh, I do a lot of recommending of regular blood testing for people. Again, like the podcast that I did with Dr. LaValle on the Holistic Navigator explains this. And, and they do offer omega-3 tests, but they're so much more expensive and they're also not as informative as, as this particular test. Uh, again, you can, people can get this at nutritionw.com, the sponsor, by just typing in omega-3 test. Now, uh, and again, the blood testing at the lab, you go to your doctor, it, I, I never see it less than 150 bucks, and it's also not as informative. So I, I'm, I'm highly recommending actually in this case to do the at-home version of this and not the regular lab version. But the two people I've seen back in the days when I only had that test before you came out with it, uh, there was two individuals, one of which had did never had taken any supplements of omega-3 origin, and she had a very high index. And she was from Finland, and it was about a 50-year-old woman. And when I delved into her diet, as I do with almost everyone, I came to find out that she did eat one to two cans of very high-quality sardines every single day. And just like you said previously, a rig, rig, rigorous consumption every day of these kind of foods, you don't need a supplement. But how many people are willing to do that? And I'm so kind of negative on the farm-raised salmons, even though I still eat them when I have to. They simply don't have the health quality that we really would desire in, in the wild caught. Well, let's Talk about, uh, Mr. Wiley, okay, somebody gets the test. And again, on this test, the other big part is memory. So these people who are like my age, I'm 64, uh, or I think anyone past 45, we know that the brain, um, 90% of the fat in the brain is part of the omega-3 complex called DHA. And why take a chance? I mean, just let's talk about supplementation because it's it's so easy but it's also easy to make a mistake on choosing because all the packages look pretty. They all look professional. But it's the source, the processing, the timing. There's so much that goes in to the end result of a fresh quality product. And while I'm sp speaking on this, the past few podcasts, I've made a huge statement against Amazon. And the reason I say it, it's not because they're not a credible company. It's, it's really about all companies who sell nutritional supplements online. What do you think happens to these omega-3s and many nutrients sitting in a UPS truck? Because I, I Googled, what is the temperature of an average UPS truck in the summer? It's 142 degrees. Uh, we know these things are fragile. Oils and fats are more fragile than almost anything other than probiotics. So at NutritionW.com, they're the only company I know that offers uh, cold packs for $1 a piece. So when you order things, you can order as many cold packs as you feel the need for. And that preserves that product to the best of its ability. So as far as people choosing, and I know I have delved into your company, Wally's Finest, and there's not a better uh, list of parameters and quality expectations that I've ever seen at any company uh, as uh, that be, that could ever be yours. So how do people know when they walk into a I won't say a drugstore. Let's go ahead and just write those drugstores off. Let's say a store that actually does have some focus on nutritional supplementation, and they're looking at a bottle. What's their first step? Well, the first step would be to try to pick between what's the omega-3 content versus what's the EPA and DHA omega-3 level because there are seven different omega-3 fatty acids that make up something you could call omega-3s. The two most important, the long chain marine-based omega-3s are EPA, eicosapentaenoic acid, and DHA, docosahexaenoic acid. And those, those two are principally what you find in fish, um, not found in land-based sources. Uh, you get a little bit from an egg, um, uh, you know, a pasture, uh, raised omega-3 egg might have a higher content, say maybe in 50 or 100 milligrams, but still fairly small amounts compared to an omega-3 supplement. So a lot of omega-3 supplements will say an amount of omega-3s or amount of just the fish oil uh, content, the weight of the fish oil, but 100% of the fish oil is not 100% of the omega-3s. And so looking at the nutrition facts panel on the back 
of the box and seeing how much EPA and how much DHA there is on the label. International recommendations from scientific bodies and uh, international experts say, you know, between 500 and 1,000 milligram, you know, half a gram to a gram per day is a good target for overall general wellness in the average person. Um, and then for therapeutic indications, um, it can be a range from a gram uh, to as much as four or five grams, depending on the individual, depending on their genetics, their weight, their gender, their age. Um, and the, the, the fascinating thing about the omega-3 index when using uh, an omega-3 product is it allows you to get the best value out of the seafood that you're eating, the best value out of the omega-3 supplements that you're consuming. Um, the, the vast majority of uh, the, the, the food questionnaires that the omega-3 uh, researchers have done, that, that where they ask you questions about your daily habits, and then they can correlate those questions to the data that they know about your omega-3 levels, their data shows most people need to take one omega-3 supplement, a concentrate, every day, and eat seafood three times a week to get their their um, omega-3 index in the optimal range, which means that they would need to take more than one concentrated omega-3 supplement every day if they choose not to eat seafood on a regular basis. So the, the, the fascinating thing about all this omega-3 testing is it takes the guesswork out. You know, traditionally, a dietitian um, has a lot of reference charts and tables um, based on sound data, based on sound science, but it's okay for this age, for this, you know, weight, for this gender, for this condition, this is what I'd recommend. And omega-3 can, re and omega-3 index can really take the guesswork out of that process and just say, listen, we can assess where your levels are. We know based on your body weight, roughly how much you'll need to take in addition to get uh, your omega-3 index into the optimal range. Um, and, you know, in 12 weeks of supplementation, then we can retest and see where you're at. Well, great information. And I'm, I'm happy to hear you say 12 weeks. I was going to ask that question. And again, my index is 11 percent. What uh, if people are wondering, OK, what does Ed Jones take? I take uh, actually three capsules of a pretty high dose of omega-3s almost every day. And I do eat no less than two servings a week. And in some weeks I eat four servings. I do tend to live on a mostly keto diet Monday through Friday, Saturday and Sundays I don't. So I am consuming a modest amount of red meat and a little bit of chicken during the week for my protein. And if I can't get quality fish, then I actually don't eat it because it's not always super available. In fact, last night I went out to eat a place that uh, has wonderful wild-caught salmon and their truck had not arrived yet. So I did not get the choice of that. But normally I would do three. Now, I will say I'm remembering a gentleman, uh, his name was Steve, years ago. He's been uh, – I've been kind of counseling him for – probably 35 years, and he would eat a can of tuna every day, and his omega-3 levels were pretty good. He was taking one pill a day, I think, of good quality omega-3, and again, quality is the key to this, and but his, and he had a good omega-3, but I thought, you know what? I'm not a fan of tuna. Let's test your heavy metals. It was off the chart for mercury. I mean, it couldn't go any higher, and it had to have come from that because he's now been off of tuna. We switched him to canned because he wanted he's a bodybuilder, and he wanted to eat canned something after every workout. And so we switched him to canned salmon and, and some canned chicken when he didn't want to eat salmon. And now he's got, you know, very low levels of heavy metals. It did take two years, uh, and he did take a few other nutrients to help get rid of that. So we have to, you know, again, heavy metals in – some omega threes, some products are not being tested, and if it comes from the wrong quality of fish or the wrong location on Earth, uh, it's a spooky thing, isn't it? And like, what does your company do to guarantee that the quality is is on on board? Well, for, first of all, I can say that um, we've long been a member of the global organization for EPA and DHA, which is called GoEd, and. Um, GoHead has done rigorous internal testing uh, and sponsored uh, peer-reviewed testing of its members' products for a long, long time. And so um, what their research has shown is for the vast majority of omega-3 supplements sold around the world, um, quality is high 
and heavy metal content is, um, you know, within the safe range of what, what, you know, international experts and, and, you know, you know, regulatory monographs or, um, recommendations would, would indicate. So I, I think we can say that overall our industry is a very, um, it's a very safe industry. We do rigorous internal testing, um, to, uh, make sure that we're removing, uh, PCBs. So per persistent organic pollutants, you know, chlorinated, uh, biphenyls and things like that. Um, dioxins, furans, uh, lead, cadmium, mercury, arsenic. So these different, uh, common heavy metals that are, are of concern and, and, you know, deposit in, in marine life. And so, um, there's a variety of processing techniques, things like activated carbon, and molecular distillation that are used to absorb these minor uh, contaminants onto, you know, onto carbon or, or to take them out of the product. And so you get a very clean, fresh, pure, you know, uh, fresh and pure oil. Uh, and then, you know, uh, regular uh, third party testing to make sure that um, your process is working as described. And so, I mean, I think, I think I can say with confidence, um, when I pick up an omega-3 supplement around the world, uh, whether it's my product or whether it's one of my competitors, um, we're, a, we're, one of the, we're one of the industries, I would say globally, with the best track record of quality and safety. I love that because, you know, I've called myself the gatekeeper often as far as the recommendations that I make for companies because it, the public is still – um, not capable of fully looking into the transparency of every single company. People have to, uh, busy lives and, and they, they want to find trustworthy partners on this path to optimal health. And I think when they listen to, hopefully listen to me, they have faith in the fact that my long history and certainly with, with you, um, Mr. Wiley, and the fact that you are the gatekeeper also, it's obvious that you would never allow any of the um, obvious uh, or, or I'll say this, you wouldn't take shortcuts to produce more profit at the expense of quality. And that transparency is what people are craving today who actually understand the process of of working toward optimal health. And when I say optimal health, most people today have regu 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 regulated their, their whole life to become normal health. And the norm is disastrous. I mean, we're having, you know, people on so many meds at 35 years old to function, to sleep, to have less anxiety, and they're using stimulants constantly. And I don't know what's going to happen to all these 25 to 50 year olds when they get my age, even at 64, because it's it's not creating a resilience and a long term uh, uh, kind of confidence in the body that that I am really scared about because once you truly start falling apart it's much harder to pull it all back together and it's far easier to to keep it together than to rearrange it back and so making these choices when we still have capacity to be fully functional uh, is not only important, it's life-saving so I think you certainly will become a partner in people's uh, health and I'm want them to, you know, if they're looking into brands, uh, while he's finest, I just, you know, right there at the top of, of the game and the fact that they now have a personal uh, almost interview with the person who's totally behind the quality of the uh, product. I think it's just people want that. They crave it. And I, I love the fact that you're willing to to come on the Holistic Navigator and talk about it. Is there any other last tips that we want to leave people with as far as uh, dosing or quality or choices in order to, to fine tune this conversation? Absolutely. So, well, thanks for that. And I think to, to, to focus on, you know, what, what are some of the most critical parameters you would look for, for in an omega-3 supplement? So if, if most omega-3 supplements on the market um, are safe from a contaminants, heavy metals or, or organic pollutants uh, perspective. Um, and there's, you know, it's a very upstanding industry where we've really focused on to differentiate and rise above uh, many other products out there on the market is fishy taste and odors. So can we keep a very clean, pure, fresh tasting product 
low oxidation parameters, low rancidity levels. Um, and what's the critical importance for that is because if the product is disgusting and it tastes fishy, you won't take it on a regular basis. And if you don't take it on a regular basis, it won't impact positively your health. You won't reach that optimal health level. And so um, in a peer reviewed journal that was an independent study, U.S. Journal of Food Composition and Analysis, uh, last January, more than 20 mass market and natural product specific brands were surveyed and tested for, you know, this is a secret shopper. We didn't know anything about it, pulled off the shelf. Um, and our peak EPA, which is our number one bestseller, uh, had the lowest rancidity, the lowest total oxidation or TOTOX of all of the products that were tested in it. So um, whether mass market brands or some of the premium natural channel brands like Carlson. So uh, very, very prestigious honor for us to, to, to have that demonstrated peer reviewed independent third party uh, testing and validation that our product is very fresh and very high quality that when you take it, you're, you're not going to get those nasty fishy burps. And then I think the second thing is, is um, as the world becomes more conscious of its food supply chains and it becomes more conscious of where things come from, how they're made, who makes them, who grows them, who catches them, um, what are the working conditions for the people that, you know, harvest things? Are they ethically treated? Um, are they respectfully, um, you know, dealt with when they're, you know, in working conditions? And so, um, sustainability, whether the fish are going to come back every year or whether it's a sustainable and respectful ethical work environment for the employees. Um, that's something that's a really big focus. I think you should look at in your sourcing. We're very proud to use a, a certified sustainable source by the Marine Stewardship Council. And it is a wild Alaska Pollock exclusive. It's a single species source. There's very few official supplements on the market that are a single species source. Um, and it's all from wild Alaska Pollock. So it's caught in America. It's caught in Alaska by American fishers. It's purified uh, at our family owned and operated plant in Ohio by American workers. Wow, that is super impressive. You have checked every box that I could imagine. And I love the fact you brought up the rancidity issue. I mean, most people who have consumed omega-3s uh, have burped and had a, a pretty nasty taste at times. That doesn't guarantee the, the fish oil is rancid, but it's a sign that it's probably best to choose another brand the next time. And I, there's nothing more harmful to us than rancid oils. In fact, many of our health concerns today Today is 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 really focused around really two food components: sugar and and un, uh, poor quality oils like canola oil, rancid oils, processed oils. Because you know the brain, every cell of our body, the membranes utilizes these fats to rebuild themselves each and every day. And if you're building a house with inferior materials, you know that there will be a big price to pay once it's completed. Well, Mr. Wiley, this has been an super informative. I'll, actually, for me also, I've, I've learned several great things, and I know people who are listening uh, will be now informed even better to make the kind of wise choices that will pay off multiple dividends as the years go on. And again, we, we need to put together a team of, of respected experts for our journey th through life and 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 to age gracefully r the correct decisions have to be made this isn't like you can do the wrong thing and then whoops i'm going to change 10 years down the road and fix it you kind of lost some time when you make decisions number one based on price alone and uh, and and none of these products are excessively expensive that's the things but to go out and just look for bargain 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 then have it sent through the mail through extreme heat you're kind of dooming yourself so I'm just kind of going off on my little tangent here but uh, thank you so much uh, mr. Wiley and, I'm, and hopefully we'll be talking to you and with updates down the road on any other new testing or anything else that changes in the field of of Omega-3. Thanks very much. It was a lot of fun. And we will be here as always. And as long as I can keep this thing going, I love doing the Holistic Navigator. And everyone, please email with any questions. We're getting more and more of those all the time. Uh, we are available. Uh, some of my health coaches for 
uh, paid coaching for nutritional advice. We cannot, we cannot replace a dietitian, and we're not doing treating medical conditions. But if you feel like you need to have someone to uh, work better with you to help create a plan, please email us and we will uh, make that happen. I read something just yesterday, Henry David Thoreau, and I loved it. I'd never seen this before. And of course, you know, just think how long ago this was. Nature is doing her best each moment to make us well. She exists for no other end. So do not resist, because with the least inclination to be well, we should not be sick. And I really like that, because with the least inclination to be well, and that's what we're doing here, is trying to inform you of how to take those steps to create optimal health. So until next time... Be fearless, be healthy, and be brave. This is Ed Jones with The Holistic Navigator. The information on this podcast and the topics discussed have not been evaluated by the FDA or anyone of the medical profession. It is not aimed to replace any advice you may receive from your medical practitioner. The Holistic Navigator assumes no responsibility or liability whatsoever on behalf of any purchaser or listener of these materials. The Holistic Navigator is not a doctor, nor does he claim to be. Please consult your physician before beginning any health regimen.